Thanks for staying with us. Now to Adamawa State, where federal government has assured victims of recent gunmen attacks of adequate security. Secretary to the government of the Federation Boss Mustafa gave this assurance while visiting the victims of the attack to commiserate with them. Students in Adama State, Northeast Nigeria, are yet to experience any incident of kidnapping of boarding students since the incident started. But the police have promised to safeguard all schools across the state. Insecurity is rife in Adamawa, but the state police command also appears battle ready to flush out miscreants. Part of the strategy we adopted is that we engage all the principal and, uh, and the leaders of all schools, secondaries, primary, and uh, uh, we keep patrolling most of this school and we equally go to the extent of advising the management of those schools to employ the services of uh, vigilante and all these uh, hunters, which we collaborate with them and uh, we visit them. Those visit give them support. Nigeria Union of Teachers at Damawa appeals to government to take serious measures that will give students the confidence to study without fear or threat. On government's position regarding local hunters and other security outfits in all the schools across the country, the state chairman of NUT has this advice. Uh, these traditional hunters or whatever you call them, almost every place we have them, in every village we have them. Why can't government contract these people and give them as a contract if they cannot be employed so that they take care of our schools? When schools are closed, everybody goes back to his normal life. When schools are open in the morning from 7, they should be around the school protecting the students. After closing hours, everybody goes, they too goes home. Parents and other education stakeholders in Adamawa can only hope that with adequate government support for the police and other security outfits in the state, students and indeed all citizens can sleep with their two eyes closed. Now, this is on um, family planning. According to reports, Nigeria's population grew by 2.6% between 2015 and 2020. The country's fertility rate was at 5.2 children per woman, making it the seventh most fertile nation on earth. In a bid to intensify advocacy on the need for family planning, the River State Media Practitioners for Family Planning have organized a roundtable discussion with relevant stakeholders orders to address factors mitigating family planning. They also seek a commitment for sustained service for consumables and commodities. This is a media roundtable on reproductive health and family life planning for adolescents and youth in River State. The State Commissioner for Health, Professor Prince Will Chike, discloses that family planning services protect social development, especially in adolescent age. Professor Chike, who is represented by the Director of Public Health and Disease Control, Golden Owanda, stresses that sexually active adolescents should embrace family planning. Family planning also takes into consideration fertility. It also enables you to be fertile at the time that you want to be and not be fertile at the time you don't want to be. So you see, when you offer this kind of services to everybody, it destigmatizes it. It takes away the mythologies and the conspiracy theories that people have because you're offering to them what they really need in their reproductive life. So for a young adolescent, this is an opportunity. This is a service that the government and the people provides for them. The State Family Planning Coordinator, Dr. Doris Igbanibo, assures residents of continuous sustainability of the program and engagement of stakeholders in the communities of effective awareness. Other stakeholders share their views on the need for more advocacy on family planning. A lot has been done on demand generation and uh, we're far, far better than where we, we, we were some time back. And um, um, I believe that we, as states, uh, as a state, whatever we, we've achieved so far 
it's not something we're going to draw back on. We need to also be specific in terms of access. When we talk about access for family planning and contraceptive for young people and adolescents, we need to ask ourselves, what does access mean to them? Because when we say access, access, there is cost implication in access because services can be available here, but when they don't have money to fund that, they cannot obtain it. Um, show the first line of action for young people, which is to bridge abstinence. We, we really can't bypass that. Now, when you have emphasized um, the importance of abstinence, you might want to drip it down to what we call life planning for adolescents and youths. Family planning as a way of life was instituted by the Holy Quran more than 1,440 years ago. As a matter of fact, first line introduction of uh, family planning is that if you cannot afford a wife, the Quran says you can abstain, you can abstain from having illegal sexual relationship with a female. The theme for the program is sustained family planning, financing for women of reproductive age and young persons service uptake, consumables, commodities and demand creation. Now, according to reports, family planning is one of the 10 great public health achievements of the 20th century. The availability of family planning services allows individuals to achieve desired birth spacing and family size and contributes to improve health outcomes of infants, children, women and families. A group dedicated to providing care for breast cancer survivors has launched prosthetic breasts and bras for survivors as women who undergo a mastectomy find it very difficult to assess braziers. Our correspondent Ngozi Kauhai Jesse has more on this. For many survivors of breast cancer, wearing the right bra and prosthesis can go a long way in helping them heal emotionally and physically. But finding such bras after breast cancer is not always an easy task. Hope came alive for cancer survivors in Lagos at the launch of a collection of prosthetic breast forms and bras, specifically designed to meet their needs. The launch was made possible by the care organization Public Enlightenment, COOP. Speaking on the essence of this breast care exhibition and prosthetics, chairman of the organization Professor Osato Jiwa Osagi, says it is to alleviate the suffering cancer survivors go through in order to live a normal life. It started by people wearing the same bra but putting uh, cotton wool and so on on the side. But you may still see a difference. But with the prosthesis, when they put it in the bra for you, and you take a frontal photograph or side view, they look, they look as if the two breasts are there. Founder of COPE, Ebon Ola Anazi, advises survivors who do not know about the prosthetic bras. Um, I'll be surprised if they don't know because we've been here for 26 years. It's going 26 years now. And a lot of people come from different um, states to see us here. Some of them come because they know they can get their prosthesis. But we're just officially launching this so that a lot of people, a lot more people can know what we're doing. So what I would say is that breast cancer is not the end of the world. These survivors are happy to be beneficiaries of the prosthetic breast and bras as they express their excitement. So, so excited because uh, Shortly after the surgery, when the wound healed, I found out that it wasn't easy. We normally use a lot of funny things like tissue, um, even cloth, just to make sure that something is there. But looking around today and we have so, 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 something like this, I'm so, so happy. I was more than happy. Because at least it saved my life. I can move anywhere as I like. If I'm going out anywhere, nobody will know that I have eye cancer. The two, the two breasts will be okay. The facilitator urges women to always examine their breasts at least once every month because early detection of breast cancer can be managed. 
Ngozika or HSE for Plus TV Africa. Now, research has it that for a woman, normalcy is getting her breast back. And most survivors who did not have access to the braziers are prone to stigmatization, which could lead to psychological problems. Still on breast cancer and on humanitarian angle. All over the world, breast cancer has been identified as the leading cause of mortality from cancers among women. A youth court member currently serving at the Suruleri local government area of Lagos State in a bid to give back to her community organized a free breast and cervical cancer screening for 300 women in the community. The event was well attended by members of the National Youth Service Corps. Details in this report. Getting screening tests regularly may find breast, cervical and other cancers early when treatment is likely to work best. Breast and cervical cancer screening services are made available to women in the Suleri local government area with some 300 women as beneficiaries. This initiative is the brainchild of Onyi Consola Onwuchekwa, apparently not without some family support. Her mother explains how essential the program is to women, especially at the grassroots. Um, I'm doing this particular project under NYC, but I actually have an NGO. They are the ones in the purple t-shirts, KKC and the Community Initiative, which was founded in 2017. So this is what we do regularly. Every year we provide free medical services to people and communities. We have done free um, eye tests, we have done um, cervical and breast cancer screening, and we also give out free welfare items to people. I feel very blessed and honored to be doing this for NYC because NYC is a very great initiative and program, and I'm just blessed to be able to give back to my community and to give back to my country at large. I'm a living testimony of um, early detection of cervical cancer. Over 10 years ago, I attended this free screening as this, and I was discovered to have the first stage of cervical cancer screening. It was discovered and immediately it was taken out through what they call cryotherapy. So for her NYC project, the community development project, she said, mommy, let me extend this to other children. Let them have the opportunity of having their mothers around them as much as I have mine with me too. A cross section of the beneficiaries express their appreciation. In fact, I must say I'm quite impressed with uh, Onye Kosola, you know, a youth copper that I actually gone into this. It's wonderful for a copper to have the time to go all over the place, you know, asking people to come for this. Um, the time that she has spent, you know, our youth now these days, you know, they go after something else. For her to have done this, I give her time. Cervical and breast cancer are most frequently diagnosed in women between the ages of 35 and 44, with the average age at diagnosis being 50. Many older women do not realize that the risk of developing cervical cancer is still present as they age. However, these cancers rarely occur in women who have been getting regular tests to screen for cervical cancer before they were 65. Gestures like this, therefore, would go a long way in mitigating this deadly disease. Uchechi Obwehi Daniel, reporting for Plus TV Africa. Well, quite a commendable gesture there. The goal of the program is to increase the awareness of women on breast cancer and ultimately reduce mobility and mortality associated with the disease. It's a wrap now, but before we go, let's to remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Obuku. Thanks for watching.